Uh, welcome back um, our viewers today we have uh, a visitor who managed to score high in her metric so she's going to tell us some of, some of the ideas uh, she can pass over to the next generation or the people who are in metric uh, how did she make it to uh, be in that position uh, of good results all right it is M Saidi. Uh, and uh, welcome uh, to our studio for Thunder Eduk. Thank you. Um, uh, can you tell us what is your name? My name is Sharon Mugwena and I am a former matriculant from Lambano Academy. I'm uh, very happy that you managed to perform well and uh, you got uh, some distinctions where maybe you will tell us how did you manage to get those distinctions. Um, first of all, I knew how it, I know how it feels to get high marks, so that pushed me to the fact that I can't just go any lower because I know how happy I, I can be when I uh, produce very good marks. And another thing, I had pressure. The pressure was um, good pressure, not the pressure that would like let me down or anything like that. I had pressure from school, I had pressure from my parents, and that had to push me to do very, very well. And I know what I want. I knew from my metric year, the moment that I started, that these are the marks that I want by the end of the year. And that pushed me to excel a lot in my subjects. So do you have any subjects you got distinctions? <laughs> yes. Yeah, what are those subjects? I got um, four distinctions in mathematics, life sciences, geography and life orientation and almost a distinction in africans with a 79 percent oh maybe so, they should round up to 80 yeah, percent so, <laughs> yeah. uh, so i see an uh, upcoming doctor um is is it the line to uh, you're gonna be pursuing that side or something different um, when growing up, I, I thought I was going to be in health sciences, but then when I was in grade 11, I realized that no, I just want something mathematical. Not, I didn't want to deal with the human anatomy. So I was like, okay, it's probably going to be in engineering or anything along data sciences. But now I think after pursuing a degree around mathematics, I'd rather go to health sciences, but not precisely being a doctor because I don't think I can like be a medical doctor. So I see that you got a distinction in meds. There are so many people there outside there uh, who are struggling with meds. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And actually, um, it's not uh, the school you are talking about. It's not that first class um, mm -hmm. school. It's, yes. it's, it's a school which has just formed mm -hmm. recently. Yes. And you managed to yeah. get <clears throat> all these uh, good results. Can you share to us uh, some of the specific strategies or resources you used uh, during maybe during these subjects you obtain distinctions? Okay, first of all, for my maths and physical sciences, when I got my grade 11 results in December, I didn't rest. So I prepared for maths and physics in December, right? So I, I was attending, I had a tutor during December and I prepared for term one, my whole term one for maths and sciences, right? So, and then when it came in, when in January, when I was taught that it was just a form of revision, that's how I started my year. And then for subjects like life sciences, before I was taught in class, I'd make sure that I go through my ATP. I made sure that my ATP was my friend so that I know which um, things do I have to master, right? And then I'll go through it. I wouldn't necessarily study, but go through it so that when I get into class, I know, oh, this is what I need to know. And then, yes. Oh, so, so you are even using ATP as if you were a teacher. Yes. You know, uh, uh, maybe you wanted to get um, some good results. Yes. Uh, are there some challenges you encountered during this period of study and actually studying on your own? Um, studying on my own, especially new concepts that I wasn't taught in class, it was hard because I wouldn't understand some concepts and I needed um, guidance from my teacher and that's when I, I got to understand that I can't do all of the concepts alone. So those are some of the challenges that I faced and other challenges, um, especially with life sciences, I realized like from term one that I would get good marks but then there are questions like when I would check and verify my question, my answer scripts, I would actually realize that I couldn't answer well and I couldn't get maximum answers like for example six months six marks answers I wouldn't get all of them and that just made me realize that 
I didn't know how to answer well. And I had to go through uh, question papers, go through memos for me to understand how am I supposed to answer life science life sciences questions so i that was a challenge because it took some time for me to be able to answer perfectly so yeah so do you advise some people to read on their own or to read ahead before they go for the class i would very much advise people to read ahead i'm not saying they should study and actually understand but then have an idea of what the teacher is going to teach them that is like a very very good thing to do because the moment you have an idea it's the moment you're going to be interested in what the teacher is going to teach so that it means that basically when you are reading you are not getting everything which we are yes. reading by then yes so you only obtained it when you went back to class and you sit under yes. the teacher. Absolutely. What about those people who are outside there? They don't have a teacher mm -hmm. and then they are just studying on their own. Is there any advice you can give them? Because you used to study your own and then you go back to the teacher. But now these people, they don't have a teacher, but they might need also have good marks. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is there anything you can advise them? Yeah, I think we are very lucky that there's YouTube there's a lot of resources online so one thing for sure you might not have a, a physical teacher but then youtube is there thunder eduk is there you can just literally go on their website and then you'll understand the concepts from there so one thing for sure it doesn't matter if you have a teacher or you don't have a teacher we as learners are not supposed to depend on our teachers right so for those who don't have teachers i advise them use the resources that you have go to youtube let that Virtual teacher be the one that teaches you. Just act like, okay, this is my physical teacher. But one thing for sure, when you don't have a teacher, you need to study more than somebody that has a teacher. And that way, you are at an advantage because you just want to do better and you don't want to be painted as that learner that doesn't have a teacher and that's why they failed. No, you can excel without having a teacher. Okay. Hey guys, outside there, if you don't have a teacher, make sure that uh, you go... For Sunday Duke, it will help you so that you get a <laughs> distinction. All right. Then you do commercials mm -hmm. and you decided to them, mm, let me go for science trip. Mm -hmm. Because there are some kids there who don't know, they are still there, maybe grade 10, grade 11, they are still struggling to decide. What sparked you to be in that stream of science and you excelled them? I think from the time when I was young, I knew I had to branch into science, right? And I realized that I'm actually somebody that doesn't like uh, reading a lot of theory. It, I think it gets boring, right? I just want problems, then I solve those problems. I need um, questions, then I come up with solutions. Then that's when I realized I need to do something that is more practical. But then I had to like balance it with practical subjects. And I was like, okay, that means I just need to go for sciences. And besides that, I just knew I had to do sciences because I was doing so well in natural sciences, in technology, in um, mathematics in grade nine and eight. And then that's when I was like, okay, I can't go to general. I I can't go to commerce. The reason I didn't go to the commerce stream is because, okay, accounting is more practical, but then I didn't like uh, econo, um, EMS in grade nine. I was like, okay, I can't go to this. So it's more of what I loved and what um, sparked interest as I was in grade eight and nine. Then I knew that, okay, in grade 10, I'm definitely going to the science stream. Okay, how? You said you got a distinction in life science, mm -hmm. a distinction in maths. How is this situation of getting distinction um, affected your future in mm -hmm. academics? Um, when I realized that I got four distinctions, first of all, I was mad at myself because four was my minimum number of distinctions. I was aiming for a kiss six, right? Mm -hmm. But then when I saw my average, my average was 80%. I was like, no, man, you did well. And... The fact that I got uh, these dis dis distinctions, then it's pushing me to work even more harder when I'm furthering my studies. So it definitely had a very positive impact in my life. I'm content. I passed my metric well. So those distinctions really made a positive, positive impact. So, so basically the subjects where you didn't get distinctions, you are going to throw them out. So when you go to the university, you're going to go with the subjects where you got distinction that's where your career is is linked so are you gonna get distinction still when you go to the university definitely 
Okay, people outside there who are going to study with her, watch out, she's coming. All right, um, we have a lot of um, universities here mm -hmm. in South Africa. Uh, which university do you think is most likely to be your best university? University of Cape Town. Okay, I think most people like University of Cape Town, but I think I just like fell in love with it from the moment I was young. I was like, no man, when I grow up, I want to go to UCT. When I grow up, I want to go to UCT. So it has to be University of Cape Town. Let's pray that uh, University of Cape Town Please. gives you or accepts you. Uh, yeah. So. Did you involve yourself uh, maybe in cross night camps and stuff? How did you manage to pass apart from the your self study and uh, your studies from class? Is there any extra activities you did so that it boosts your marks? One thing for sure, me and my classmates um, didn't just depend on our teachers from school or just um, our own study time. We made sure that we attend cross nights, a lot of cross nights. We came to Royal College, we'd come to cross nights uh, that are hosted by Thunder Ejuk. We went to a camp that was hosted by Thunder Ejuk. We'd go to cross nights even in schools that were in Tepesong, schools that were anywhere. We'd just... Um, I let each other, guys, there's a cross night here, let's just go. So I made sure if there's a cross night, I'm going to attend it because I didn't want to depend on just one source, just my teacher or just my own self, but then hear different views of how people teach. So we definitely went to a lot of cross nights last So year. it means that that thing helped you. A lot. Whenever you could hear that there is a, there is a, a class somewhere, mm -hmm. you just yes. go as a, a team. Yes. Is there anything other than school like maybe sports and stuff mm -hmm. where are you doing or you are interested in um sports i didn't like uh participate in any sports last year but then i have a, i am passionate about um activism right so that is my side thing so i am an activist so that is yeah something i'm passionate about besides school right i am a girls and women empowerment activist and also an ambassador for other things so yes it's not just about school but i'm also interested in sports i'm a netball player and i'll, I'll make sure that in tertiary i literally play netball because i didn't get to play it a lot in high school so yes oh, so people who are in sports or any other things which are not related to school mm -hmm. they can still perform better yes. if they manage their time do you Absolutely. think do you think it, it, it can work out for them time management is very very important i think if somebody at 100 percent focuses on school they might lose their mind you need to relax if you don't have anything to do get time to walk go out not just literally just go out with your friends enjoy what but then have time for yourself because the moment you just focus you might you might black out at the wrong time so it's not 100 percent about school go out nature read something read a novel not just your books so I definitely advise people to also focus on something else but then their majority of their focus should be on their schoolwork okay thank you so much for visiting our studio um i think people who are watching uh, you have benefited from this uh, interview and uh, wish you the best for upcoming uh, metric yes however much is just the beginning but you have to start high as she has said mm -hmm. please prepare make sure that um you score high from day one don't wait mm -hmm. for uh, 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 september and then you start reading start reading now so that you are able to pass your exams those uh, cast mark you get will help you to boost and then you get your distinction thank you so much see you again in the next clip